Hey, today I'm talking about three films by famed German director Warner Herzog, all of which feature men going on a perilous journey, two of which are on water. And the names of those three films are Fitzcarraldo, Aguirre, Wrath of God, and Strazek. Is Fitzcarraldo. This is a 1983 film, and I haven't seen this one before, but I have seen a couple of video essays on it, so I knew a bit about it going into it, but honestly don't think that was any kind of detriment, because I really, really enjoyed this film. It is so good. It's long, but it's really good. The basic premise is this man in Peru has tried his best to make a big success there. He tried a railroad line, but that didn't work. Now he really wants to make an opera house in the middle of the jungle, and that's not going great. But then he comes up with a new plan that's kind of even crazier than the other ones. I knew what it was going into it, even though you don't actually find out what it is until most of the way through the movie. But I think it's kind of fine either way. Like, if you do know there's this anticipation waiting for, like, when is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? What are they going to do? And if you don't know what's going to happen, it's all like, what are they doing? Where are they going? How exactly are they going to do this? What's the whole point of everything? Thing. But yeah, no, it's just so great because like there's just constant building tension and like it starts off so wonderfully too because the main actor, Claus Kinsey, just look at him. He looks like he's crazy and he really nails that just like batshit look and he starts off swinging so hard. As soon as he starts doing stuff, you're like, this guy should be in a mental hospital and like it puts you in such the right mindset for the rest of the film. The movie just always had me on my toes, even though I knew kind of the end goal. It just, it was a ride. It was so, so good. And I particularly enjoyed his performance. Yeah, so I loved this movie. It was so good. I without a doubt recommend it. You're in for a really good crazy time. It's, yeah. <laughs> Next up is Aguirre, Wrath of God. This is a 1972 film and man is it crazy. This is loosely inspired by a true events in which Spanish conquistadors made their way to South America in search of El Dorado. And so this one large company of people are lost in the wilderness, so they cut off a smaller group to then go search down the river to see if they can find either food or El Dorado, whatever that comes first. And yeah, it's great. What it does so well, the slow descent into madness. Like, yeah, it's clear that like they're reading crazy, but like it's so subtly and beautifully done of them just kind of trying to survive in a raft in the Amazon and it's great. I in particular really loved Claus's performance here again. He kind of goes on the opposite arc of the last movie where he like starts off kind of sane and maybe kind of like a voice of the people, but ends the movie just batshit and it's great. The end of the movie is just awesome. And what's great too is that like it's in a sense a quiet movie. There's not like a ton of dialogue, but there's always something happening. Even if it's not like the most obvious of like, this is a thing, there is always a thing happening and it means something. That's kind of the, the brilliance of this little film. And you can really see too the building blocks of this movie, how he went from this movie in 1972 to Fitzcarraldo in 1983, like his journey as a filmmaker evolving there. You can definitely also see its influence on Apocalypse Now. It's been openly admitted that this movie was a big influence. That makes sense. But yeah, no, it's really, really good. I, again, would definitely recommend it. It's just a really crazy, interesting time. Even though I like the other one more, this one's shorter. So that's kind of the only one up this movie has on that. They're both great though. So you can't really go wrong with either of them. And lastly is Strazik. This is a 1977 film and it's pretty good. The basic premise is this alcoholic just gets released from prison and he kind of wants to start his life anew, but he doesn't exactly know how to do that. But then he comes across his prostitute friend who's having some troubles with her pimps. And so they try to band together to live a better life. I knew one more thing about the premise, which is technically a spoiler, but it's the entire reason I watched it. But it doesn't happen until halfway through the movie. I don't think it's an issue if you actually know about it going into it. And that is one of the ways in which they try to make a life better for themselves is by emigrating to Wisconsin, which is where I live. Woo. So is life better for them in the cheese state? 
I won't tell you. But I will tell you that it's a clear metaphor for the pitfalls of capitalism. Also a bit too of like the falsity of the American dream and like that false hope of constantly trying to get like a fresh start, going to a new city or a new town or a new country or what have you. And just like, is the grass gonna be greener over here? But it never is. That type of thing. And it's a very, very sad movie. It's listed as a comedy and I can kind of get the comedy-esque elements, but it's much more of a drama. I didn't connect to this movie as much as the other two. And I think that's just because the main character is such a schlub that I just couldn't really relate to him. Like I definitely empathize with his struggles, but he's just kind of such a loser that it's, I don't know. It's not really criticism of the movie. It's more of just a me not being able to like snake my way into him. It is definitely a very good movie that I am glad that I watched. I do also think it was really interesting to see Wisconsin in the 70s, especially because like I wasn't alive in the 70s. But interestingly enough, 1970s Wisconsin reminds me a lot of modern day Iowa. So I think I said something about both states. But yeah, it was still an interesting film with a very interesting ending. That was like a very clear ending and then there's kind of some more metaphorical stuff that happens after it that upon reflection I definitely relate to, but in the moment it's kind of a little silly. But yeah, I would still recommend this one even though I didn't connect to it as much. It's still a very good movie that's worth a watch. All right, you know, for today's rankings, first up, we got Fitz Corrado sitting at number 24 in the really like section. And then not too terribly far behind is Aguirre, Wrath of God, sitting at number 29, also in the really like section. And then bringing up the rear just a little bit down is Strasik at number 76 in the quite like section. And this is out of a total of 147 old movies. So, far this year.